Okay, today my video title is going to be The Real Reason Stephen Saw Jesus Standing. Because the typical, the normal and traditional way of teaching why Stephen saw Jesus standing was because Jesus stood up to receive his his soul, his spirit. He was basically giving him a standing ovation for, I guess, being such a good uh, servant and preaching the gospel of the kingdom right there in Acts 7. So I'll go ahead and read the verse real fast. It's Acts 7, 55 and 56. So, but he, being full of the Holy Ghost, he being Stephen, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. So, in every other verse, Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God, other than a few places that I'll show you. And every time it shows up, it's in regards to a specific event that I'm going to uh, show and prove to you all. So, the next verse we'll look at is Colossians 3.1. Alright, Colossians 3.1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. So see, he's sitting. So we'll look at Hebrews 8, 1 as well, which, if I can turn to it quick enough. All right, Hebrews 8, 1 says, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. So he's sitting again. And even earlier in Acts, because Acts 7 is where Stephen was stoned and martyred, but if you read in Acts 2, 34, I believe, for David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. So even earlier in Acts, Jesus was sitting, but Stephen saw him standing. And I believe there's a reason for that, and I believe the Bible tells us what that reason is. And I don't think it's coincidence that after Acts 7, you don't see one more miracle or sign happen in Jerusalem. There is not one more sign or miracle recorded in Jerusalem after they rejected the gospel of the kingdom from Stephen. And I don't think it's coincidence that the very next chapter, the first Gentile Ethiopian eunuch is saved. And then, in the very next chapter after that, Acts 9, Paul, the apostle, to the Gentiles, is converted and is given his, uh, his calling, what he's supposed to do. Okay, so the next verse I want to look at, or I guess passage of scripture I want to look at, is James 5, 7. So, James 5, starting in verse 7, we see it says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth. For the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he received the early and latter rain. So he's waiting, almost like he's sitting. So if he's waiting for the early and latter rain, which is the restoration of Israel before Jesus' second coming, which is mentioned in Joel 2.23, if you want to go and read that on your own. And we'll, we'll continue going in James 5, though. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. So it's near. So it's near. So then verse 9, following, Grudge not one against another, brethren, lest ye be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth before the door. So now he's standing. Rather than waiting and sitting like he has been on the right hand of the Lord, he's standing now, and he's ready to judge. So he's ready to return. So Jesus is standing in regards to his return. So if we look back in the Old Testament, let's look at... Isaiah 3.13, it says, The Lord standeth up to plead, and standeth to judge the people. So see, his, his judgment, the second coming, is connected to him standing to judge. So he's standing, just like Stephen saw. Another place we can look at is Amos 9.1. All right, Amos 9.1 says, I saw the Lord standing 
upon the altar. And he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the post may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them. And I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. So see, that's the second coming. That's the Lord returning, and he is standing again, just like Stephen saw. I don't think that's coincidence. I think that's comparing scripture with scripture. I think that's how you find the right doctrinal interpretation of a passage. I don't think Jesus was standing to receive Stephen's spirit. If he did that for every Christian that died, or even every martyr that died, he would be standing up pretty oftenly, over and over and over. That's just not realistic. I think Jesus was standing, showing that he was ready to return if Israel had accepted Stephen's, or Jerusalem specifically, had accepted Stephen's message, and he would have been their their king, their Messiah. The, the last half of Daniel's 70th week would have been fulfilled, and that's a, another study for another day that I'll get into probably later. But I think it's safe to say that Jesus was ready to return. He was showing that he was ready to return at that moment had Jerusalem and Israel accepted Stephen's message about him being the Messiah again. So, in James 5, 9, it said that Jesus was standing at the door. In John 10, 9, we see that Jesus is the door. And then in Revelation 4, 1, a picture of the rapture, the door in heaven is opened. So, the rapture, Jesus standing, the door opened... It's just more proof that this is the correct interpretation. So, with Israel rejecting Jesus Christ again, Jesus decides to not have any more signs or miracles happen in Jerusalem after Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 8, the Gentile Ethiopian eunuch is saved. Acts chapter 9, Paul is converted and called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. And then we read in Romans eleven seven. Paul says, What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Then you go to verse 11 and 12, the same chapter. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them, the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. So see, I think it's safe to say that Jesus was standing, ready to return, if his people had accepted him at that moment. Obviously they didn't. That ushered in the church age, and I think that that's what postponed his, his return, his second coming, was the 2,000-year uh, church age, which thank God happened, or else none of us would be saved. But I know the Lord has foreknowledge. I know he knew all of these things beforehand. I think he was just showing that he was ready to return if his people had accepted him when they were given so many options and opportunities to be able to do so. But they failed him over and over, which caused him to turn to the Gentiles for their jealousy. It says he did it to make them jealous. So praise God for that. And I believe that's the right interpretation. If there's any uh, objections, I would love to hear them again, of course. And I thank you for watching, and God bless.